Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is here, amen. Amen. And I know we had a little different beginning of the service with praise and worship this morning. But I felt really strong in my spirit that we needed body ministry this amen. morning. Amen. Sometimes we just need that body ministry, amen. We can't a lot of times get that release when we're at home ourselves and thoughts are coming and the uh, circumstances are, are in our face. So that's what I felt like the Lord wanted to do this morning. Amen. 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 And um, now I don't know what to do. I got off of my routine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm going to turn it over to Pastor. Well, it is a neighbor looking time. I want you to look at your neighbor. I want you to smile at your neighbor. I want you to point at your neighbor. And I want you to say, I came, I came to, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day. And I declare, I declare I'm, ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, Are you ready? To, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day? And I declare, I declare I'll never, I'll never, 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 ever, ever be the same, be the same again, again in Jesus' name. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise God. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus Christ on the rest of this service. Father, we thank you that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened before the hope of your calling. We thank you for revelation knowledge this day. We thank you that the word of the Lord will have free course in our midst. We thank you for strong utterance and strong anointing this day. And that your people make a strong drawing on the anointing of God this day. We thank you for answers coming in your presence this day. Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me as I yield myself as a vessel to you. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. Teach through me. Preach through me. Help me to say exactly what you want me to say this day in the way that you want me to say it. Help me to leave off anything I need to leave off. Help me to flow with you, Holy Spirit, the way you want me to flow. And Father, I thank you that we are preaching and teaching your word, and you said signs and wonders follow your word. So we're expecting and believing for signs and wonders to follow your word this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The title of the message is, This is a Judgment-Free Zone. Amen. And it is. Amen. Amen. I ask you if you want to get your Bibles and go to Isaiah 61. Yeah. Yeah. Starting in verse number 1. I'll read it in three different translations today. You know I like to do that just to kind of give us an expanded view of what it is. And in the contemporary English version, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God has taken control of me. The Lord has chosen and sent me to tell the oppressed the good news, to heal the brokenhearted, and to announce freedom for prisoners and captives. This is the year when the Lord God will show kindness to us and punish our enemies. The Lord has sent me to comfort those who mourn, especially in Jerusalem. He sent me to give them flowers in place of their sorrow, olive oil in place of tears, and joyous praise in place of broken hearts. They will be called trees of justice planted by the Lord to honor His name. In the voice, the same three scriptures, says the Spirit of the Lord, the Eternal, is on me. The Lord has appointed me for a special purpose. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to repair broken hearts and to declare to those who are held captive and bound in prison, be free from your imprisonment. He has sent me to announce the year of Jubilee, the season of eternal favor, for our enemies, it will be a day of God's wrath. For those who mourn, it will be a time of comfort. And for those who grieve over Zion, God has sent me to give them a beautiful crown in exchange for ashes, to anoint them with gladness instead of sorrow, to wrap them in victory and joy and praise instead of depression and sadness. And that's really what happened in the service this morning. We were wrapped in victory, joy, and praise instead of depression and sadness. Amen. People will call them magnificent. Like great towering trees standing for what is right. They stand to the glory of the eternal who planted them. And the last version is uh, in the easy to read version. Same three scriptures, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The Lord has chosen me to tell the good news to the poor and to comfort those who are sad. He sent me to tell the captives and prisoners that they've been set free. He sent me to announce that the time has come for the Lord to show His kindness. When our God will also punish evil people. He has sent me to comfort those who are sad, those in Zion who mourn. I will take away the ashes on their head, and I will give them a crown. I will take away their sadness, 
and I will give them the oil of happiness. I will take away their sorrow, and I will give them celebration clothes. He sent me to name them good trees and the Lord's wonderful plan. Praise God. That was kind of prophetic of what happened in the service this morning. Now, I've been to a lot of churches, and um, a lot of really good churches, and a few maybe not so wonderful. And uh, some of the not so wonderful places that I've been in my lifetime, they didn't know that the gospel was good news. Somehow, they thought it was bad news. But I'm telling you, the gospel is good news. Amen. Anytime you receive the gospel, Amen. it's going to lift you up. It's going to encourage you in some yes. way. I don't care even if it's correction. It's still done in love and gentleness. Yes. And, it, and it just puts something in you. It blesses you. It helps you. You feel better when you go out the door than when you came in the door. Amen. If you yes. feel worse when you go out the door, something's wrong. That's right. Hmm. It's good news to find out you're free and you're delivered and you're healed. And you're loved by God Almighty. Amen. This is the church. This is God's church. And we're God's people. Amen. And this is a judgment free zone. Yes. This is where broken people should come. This is where rejected people should come. This is where drug addicts should come. Come on. This is where alcoholics should come. That's right. Well, Pastor, you've got alcoholics going to your church? <laughs> yeah. I hope so. Amen. What? Amen. You hope so. I do. Yeah. If, if we're preaching the gospel, alcoholics should come. Drug addicts yeah. should come. Yeah. The outcast of society, they should come. Yeah. Because they're coming because the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ yeah. is being preached here. Yeah. And they feel loved. And they feel made whole by the power of God. They feel the acceptance of God. Come on, buddy. Yeah. yeah. This is where people that have made mistakes should come. Amen. This is where the prostitute should come. Right. This is where people who've been beat down by life should come. Amen. This is where hurting Amen. people should come. Yeah. This is where lonely people should come. Amen. This is where disappointed people should come. Yeah. This is where sick people should come. Yeah. This is where hopeless people should come. Yeah. This is where discouraged people should come. Yeah. This is where depressed people should come. Amen. This is where oppressed people should come. Amen. This is where people that don't fit in should come. Amen. Amen. This is where people that are wounded in churches should come. Hallelujah. One of the anointings on this ministry, and we're getting back to it, is to, to heal the broken heart. The, to heal people yes. that have been rejected and outcast, even in other churches. Yes. That, you know, they've been unplugged for 20 years, 25 yeah. years. They were offended. They were hurt That's in right. some Amen. way. Amen. There's anointing here to bring healing and wholeness yeah. to those yes. people and reconnect those people. Yes. Romans 3, 23 and 24, in the God's Word translation, it says, because all people have sinned, they've fallen short of God's glory. They receive God's approval freely by an act of His kindness through the price Christ Jesus paid to set us free from sin. In the Living Bible... It says, yes, all have sinned. All fall short of God's glorious ideal. Yet now God declares us not guilty of offending Him if we trust in Jesus Christ, Amen. who in His kindness freely takes away our sins. Yes. That's good news. Yes. A lot of times, people that have made mistakes and sinned, they don't come to church anymore. That's right. Because they know in a lot of churches, they'll be talked about. Yes. They'll be ostracized. Yes. They'll be rejected. Yes. They'll be shunned. Yes. There was a, a situation that happened 20, 25 years ago that I happened to know about. I wasn't in that church, but I happened to know about it. There was a young teenage girl that went to a certain church and, and uh, she got pregnant and she wasn't married. And um, she'd been going to that church for a little while and, and she went back to her home church after this happened. Well, half the people in that church stopped speaking to her. They would have nothing to do with her. They shunned her completely. There was one person in there that, that asked the people, what's wrong with you? Amen. I mean, why are you treating her like this? See, because we forget where we came from. Amen. We forget. It's the only the blood. There's no seniority in God. It's only the blood. Your goodness and my goodness is not good enough. 
We fall short. That's, That's right. what that scripture just told us. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. That's we should right. be welcoming people in no Thank matter you. what they've done. No matter Thank where you. they've been. Thank no you, matter Father. what the circumstance. Yes. We should yes. be a welcoming body of believers. A welcoming Amen. people. Amen. Yes. Come on, Pastor. We should be people that whisper behind their back. Right. They talk about, look what they did. Look what they did. Look, look what they're guilty of. That's, That's right. religion. We're not religious. We're Christians. That's right. This is That's a right. Christian church. Like we are Christian people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Religious right. people point fingers and make accusations. Yeah. Yeah. Religious people find fault. Religious people criticize and yeah. place blame yeah. and draw attention to someone else's sin. Uh -huh. right. Well, if you had any faith, you'd be healed. Amen. Well, if you had any faith, you would never get depressed. If you had any faith, you'd never have any financial problems. Amen. Or you'd never have any problems in, in general. Well, that's not what the Word of God says. Right. Amen. It says you're, you're an overcomer. You're yes. more than a conqueror. Yes. But you go through something to conquer. Amen. Excuse me. The devil, the devil is alive and well. And he's coming against us because yeah. we're children of God. Yeah. And yes, right. things come against us. But yeah. we are still standing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. stock in it. <laughs> we don't have stock in it. I don't know about it, but the movie Miracles from Heaven. Right Amen. Amen. We're going to play that movie. The second it comes out on DVD, we're going to have a movie night here at church. Oh, the yeah. second it releases, we'll have a movie night here. Yeah. And Mary's going to hook us up with popcorn and all kind of yeah. good stuff. Yeah. There she is. She's ready. She already is. <laughs> but in that movie, there was one scene. This family was going to church and their daughter was sick and she'd been sick for a while and they'd all been praying. The church had been praying. And uh, she hadn't been healed and she was getting worse. And there was two ladies in the church that after one of the church services, they came up to the lady and they said, uh, well, you know, uh, we need to find out some stuff. She said, uh, I'm paraphrasing. She said, what do you mean? She said, well, you know, we've all been praying for healing for your daughter for a long time. And yes. We know y'all have been praying. Said, uh, maybe there's sin in your life. Yeah. And that's the reason, uh, you know, maybe you need to repent. You need to check it out to see if that's it. Or, or maybe your daughter, maybe, you know, she's sinned. And, and that's the reason she's not, you know, get, she's not getting the healing. These people's words hurt this mother so bad. Yeah. She said, I will never go back to church the longest day I live. Amen. And see, there's people right now that are just like this. Amen. Now, these two ladies, they were religious people. Yes. You understand, they were on the church pew, but they were religious people. Yes. Let me read you another scripture. John 9, 1 through 3. And Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither this man sinned nor his parents, but the works of God should be manifest in him. Amen. We are not here to condemn people. Amen. We're not here to judge people. We are here to reconcile people to God. Amen. That's our job. Thank you, Father. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18 in the King James and says, All things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us. The ministry of reconciliation. Yes. That's our ministry. That's right. <clears throat> I want to read you another set of scriptures, and I've got several different things on this one. I need this one to expand to us. I need the youth to hear this message. It just was prompted to me. I want y'all to know this is a judgment free zone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about visitors coming in. I want our youth to know this is a judgment free zone. That's right. That's what this is. That's right. Amen. 
Amen. Galatians 6, 1 and 2. This is in the, uh, it's actually verse number 1, I think. In the King James. Now this is 20, 21st century King James. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye who are spiritual. Now, highlight or circle that word spiritual right there. Restore such as one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. And we're going to delve into that for a second. In the J.D. Phillips New Testament, it says, Even if a man should be detected in some sin, my brothers, the spiritual ones among you, should quietly set him back on the right path. That's right. Not with any feeling of superiority. Quietly. Amen. Quietly. A lot of times it's not handled that way in churches. Yeah. Did you hear what she did? Did you hear what he did? Yes. And then it's all over everywhere and it should have been anywhere. Amen. It shouldn't have been anywhere. Amen. What we're supposed to be doing is praying. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, yes. That's right. But set him back on the right path, not with any feeling of superiority, but being yourselves on guard against temptation. Now we're going to keep going on these two a couple of seconds here. In the Living Bible, same scripture. Dear brothers, if a Christian is overcome by some sin, you who are godly, should gently and humbly help him back into the right path. Amen. Remembering that next time it might be one of you Amen. who's in the right path. Amen. That's a whole different perspective, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that, that would never happen to me. I would never do what they did. Really? Yeah. Really? So you're above that. We're not above that. No. Same scripture in the Amplified Classic Edition. Edition. Brethren, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, you who are spiritual, who are responsive to and controlled by the Spirit, should set him right and restore and reinstate him without any sense of superiority, with all gentleness, keeping an attentive eye on yourself, that you should be tempted also. Amen. Now, let me interject. The problem is, there are not very many truly spiritual people in the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. That was good preaching. I'm yes. Truthfully, there's a lot of fault finders. There's a lot of blamers. There's, there's a lot of, of that going on. But there's not a lot of truly spiritual people who quietly pray about it. Quietly. No, no I don't want to hear that. When somebody yeah. brings it, no, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Uh -uh. The reason they don't want to hear it is because they want to pray about it. And they want to take it to the Lord and and have him oh, work yes. it out. Yes. Same scripture in the message. Live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him. <laughs> Saving your critical comments for yourself. Yes. Sometimes we get a little critical. <coughs> you might be needing forgiveness before the yes. day's out. Yes. yes. Thank you, Father. What would Jesus do? Go with me in your Bibles to John chapter 8. Start in verse number 1. What would Jesus do? This is in the Living Bible. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning He was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered and He sat, sat down and talked to them. And as He was speaking, the Jewish leaders and Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery and placed her out in front of the staring crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Moses' law says to kill her. What about it? Now see, they're there. Okay, the next verse, verse 6, says they were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and said, All right, hurl the stones at her until she dies. But only he who has never sinned may throw first. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Throwing stones is still active in a lot of churches yeah, today. Yeah. That's right. I had Jeff uh, bring me something. Oh, yeah. You know, we're thinking a little bit of rocks. They're talking about something that'll kill. Them. Yes. That's what they're they're talking about something that'll kill them. Yes. Stone them to death. Yeah. A, a little pebble's not going to stone them to death. Right. I'm sure it was greater than these. Yeah. Yes. But this gives us a visual picture. Yeah. Every time we're blaming somebody, every time we're criticizing, every time that we're finding fault about somebody else's sins, here's what we're doing. That's right. We're the Pharisee crowd. That's yeah. right. Amen. 
Then he, uh, he stooped down and again rose some more in the dust. And the Jewish leaders slipped away one by one. Amen. Beginning with the eldest until only Jesus was left in front of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to her, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, sir, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. Amen. Jesus didn't condemn her. Amen. Amen. See, this is not our purpose. Yes. yes. This is not our purpose in the body of Christ. This is not our purpose as Christian people. That's right. Matthew 7, starting verse number 1. This is an easy to read version. Don't judge others, and God will not judge you. Amen. If you judge others, you'll be judged the same way you judge them. God will treat you the same way you treat others. Why do you notice the small piece of dust that is in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the big piece of wood that's in your own? Amen. Why do you say to your friend, let me take that piece of dust out of your eye? Amen. Look at yourself first. Yeah. You still have that big piece of wood in your own yeah. eye. Yeah. You're a hypocrite. First yeah. take the wood out of your own eye, yeah. then you'll see clearly to get the dust out of your friend's eye. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 10 and 12 in the Common English Bible. Hate stirs up conflict, but love covers all offenses. Don't tell people about other people's sins. Pray for them. Love covers by not speaking and not repeating. Amen. First Peter 4 and 8 in the International Children's Bible. Most importantly, love each other deeply. Get this. Love has a way of not looking at other sins. What would Jesus do? Luke chapter 7. Starting in verse number 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would go eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and he sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. Now this is the King James Version. But in the J.B. Phillips translation it says, she was a bad woman. Amen. That's what the J.B. Phillips translation says. When she knew that Jesus sat at the meet in the Pharisee's house, she brought out an alabaster box appointment. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that is touching him, for she is a sinner. That's King James, J.B. Phillips. She is a bad woman. Yes. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will you love the most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that to him who forgave most. And he said unto him, You have rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into your house, and you gave me no water for my feet. This was the custom. But she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Yes. You gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, ceased not to kiss my feet. Yes. My head with oil you did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And he said unto the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Yes. Amen. This is a judgment-free zone. Amen. We need to be a church and a people that love people unconditionally. Yes. We must be a church and a people that uplift people, that encourage people, yes. that accept people. Yes. People that don't look like we look. Amen. People that don't dress like we dress. Amen. People that don't necessarily act like we act. They're not cookie cutter Christians. Yeah. But we don't need to be condescending when we see them at the door. Amen. They shouldn't feel us judging them because of their outward appearance. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't feel a coldness from us or a condescending attitude that looks down on them and rejects them. Amen. We are an oasis to them. Yeah, they right. desperately need love and they should get it from us. The second they enter the parking lot, the second they are seated, the second they are greeted, 
they should feel the love of God. Amen. Amen. We need to notice the people that God sends here. Let me say this one again. We need to notice the people that God sends here. Amen. Look around every service and observe, is anyone talking to the visitors? Yes. Is anyone connecting with them? Is anyone offering to take them out for lunch? Is anyone going out of their comfort zone and speaking to them? Yes. You want to bless me and Pastor Sharon? Notice the visitors. Yes. Talk to the visitors. Yes. Sometimes, truthfully, I'll be talking to some of you guys and, and, and greeting y'all because we, we love all of you. And, and I mean that from my heart. But sometimes, peripherally, I'm looking. Because I'm thinking, there's a visitor over there in the corner. Yes. That nobody, I didn't see anyone Amen. greet. I mean, we, we shook their hands and, and, and we told them we were glad they're here. But I didn't see, I see people that were, were kind of greeting together and, and because we all love each other and we, we kind of greet with our little groups and stuff. But we're not looking outside those groups sometimes. Yeah. I mean, we're not doing it on purpose. We're not doing it maliciously. Amen. But we should be stepping outside those. We should be observing with our peripheral. I don't think anybody has, has, has ministered to them. I don't think anybody told them about what the church has got. We should be loving on those people. Yeah. That's right. We should be noticing the people that God is sending here. Yeah. That's right. We should go out of our way to be friendly to them. Yes. If you feel ahead, give them your phone number. Tell them you're glad they came. You hope they come back. Yes. Tell them about the church. Tell them about the free CDs. Yes. The ladies meeting that none of the guys know anything that's going on in them. Amen. Because <laughs> what happens in the ladies meeting stays in the ladies meeting. I have got a word or two of what happened. It's crazy. I can't say it here. <laughs> Tell them about the services on YouTube. We post all the services on YouTube. Amen. And you can see the entire service. We've got over four or five years of CDs and audio uh, material now on the website. I mean, it, it, we've got stuff out there, but people don't even know about it. And we, we need to tell them. Tell them about the seniors meeting, which is the power team. Amen. The Super Kids Academy, the youth, the nursery. Try to say something to them to encourage them in some way. You don't know, and I don't know, when people come in here, sometimes they might be on their last. I mean, they're at the bottom. Amen. They are looking up at the bottom. Amen. Have you ever been there? I have been there. Yeah. And I tell you, yes. I know how it feels. Yes. And I tell you, when you're there, you're looking for anything, yes. anything that would encourage you in any, even a little way. Yes. And if they come to church, this should be a judgment-free zone. And they should be like, oh my God, I'm going yeah. to church today. Amen. And those people loved all over me. Yes. That sister Diane, she came up to me and I thought she was going to break my ribs. <laughs> she, she, put a, she put a Holy Ghost hug on me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, you knew that lady loved you. Amen. I'm serious. I mean, that's the way it should be. I mean, yeah. let, me, let me go here a little second. You know, we talk about being a spirit filled church, right. we've got the Holy Ghost. If you can't tell somebody you love them, I don't know about your Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise I mean, the Lord. You need to be able to tell people you love them. You're right. glad they came. That's you. Right. I mean, right. let God use you. That's right. Try to say something to them to encourage them in some way. Yes. This youth, I'm so proud of our youth. Yes. We need to be encouraging the youth. But we need to be yes. there. We need yes. to be yes. Yes. We God if we have you. If we have you, leaders. And Amen. we have youth that want to come. That's and right. I'm telling you, this is a judgment-free zone. Yes. Tell them God has got good news for them. That's Tell right. them this is the year of the favor. Old things are passed away. This is a new day, a fresh start, a new beginning. Tell them God has a good plan for their life. Yeah. Tell them God is not mad at them. Yes. Amen. So many churches today, they're preaching it from behind their pulpits. God is mad at them. He's an old man with a stick and he's ready to knock you in the head with it. Amen. I'm telling you, that's not the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. God's not mad. He's not had a bad day. And you're not on his list. The only list you're on is, I love you. I, 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 I just think, I, I'm so thankful you're my child. That's what God's saying. Amen. I'm so thankful I've got so many good things prepared for you. Lined up in front of you. That's what God's saying. Yes. Thank you, brother. And he's drawing with his love and kindness. Tell them their sins have been washed away. We're coming to a close. Yeah. Isaiah 43 and 25, contemporary English. But I will wipe away your sins yeah. because of who I am. And so I will forget the wrongs you have done. 
Isaiah 43, 25 and the expanded. I'm the one who erases and blots out all your sins yes. for my sake. I will not remember your sins. Yes. Tell them yes. God has forgotten the mistakes of your past. Look at your neighbor right now. Point at your neighbor and say, God, God. has forgotten yes. the mistakes yes. of your past. Yes. God, God is doing a new thing. Doing a new thing. In you. In you. Right now. Right now. This is, this is the best year best of your life. Of your life. Great, favor Great favor is coming on you. It's coming on this, you. Year. this year. Like never before. Like never before. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Woo. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.